Hi and welcome to this reading comprehension session. Children, why do we have to do reading comprehension? In brief, let us understand what comprehension refers to and how it is going to help us. I understand uh, the modern world is with completely uh, immersed with digitized um, system, but still, whether it is a hard copy or a soft copy, you read. Yet you need to read, you need to comprehend, you need to understand what the author or what a picture is communicating or a picture is trying to explain or what the author wants you to understand through the story or through the write-up. It's basically recognizing different words and not knowing what they mean does not fulfill the purpose of our goal of reading. Like when we read and we don't understand and we don't recognize the words, then it doesn't serve the purpose. It's just like a teacher gives a child a passage to read. If you are given a passage to read and you are reading the entire passage and you do not know anything when you are asked to explain. So comprehend adds meaning to what is read. You have to, reading comprehension occurs when words on a page are just mere words but they are actually the words are actually the thoughts and ideas. For example, if I say strong, when I am when I am referring to a word called strong, that means you imagine that the, the boy felt stronger after drinking milk. So you imagine that the boy who was weak, he, he could get stronger the minute he had healthy drink. So you are imagining the thoughts and ideas. So when you imagine and understand and then imagine then the comprehension makes reading enjoyable, it becomes fun and it becomes more informative. And um, what are the different strategies now to enhance comprehension? To improvise your comprehending skill, you need to have patience and you need to have a continuous guidance when using these strategies. What are those strategies as a skill, the reading skill improvises? In this, the first strategy which really helps, it helps you in predicting things. Prediction is you judge or you imagine in few, the next page or the next scene, this is what is going to happen. So the strategy involves you to make informed predictions, difference between prediction and informed predictions. Informed predictions, you already have certain words and then based on that, you imagine. Now, uh, in the story, uh, when I explain the story, I'll explain the prediction also. Prediction based on what they obtain, what you obtain from the story. Predictions can also make you guess of what is going to happen next. And these are based on what you see, what you hear, or what you read. Like when you see a book cover, you start predicting the book cover is interesting. And you may feel that the story is going to be interesting, let me read. How many times have you not felt 
or if somebody is explaining then you start predicting if this this has been explained so well like if I start explaining Niagara Falls or if I start explaining Taj Mahal you start predicting yourself okay if this is so good and when I go there and see with my own eyes how do I feel so it will help you make predictions and based on that you will start loving when you're reading like what you see what you hear read a book looking at the book's cover sometimes the titles are very interesting when you read a book the title of the book may create a curiosity in you to read the book right so drawing right you start imagining the pictures and you start drawing pictures so what do you think about this book what do you think will happen after the story when you're reading a story for example if it is a red riding hood what would what would happen to the red riding hood when she crosses the jungle when she meets a wolf and when the wolf rushes back to the grandmother's house and the girl is not yet come so what would happen so what do you think it will happen is the wolf going to eat the girl or is the wolf going to kill the girl so there are different imaginative theories which come this strategy will help you in connecting in reflecting what you had read and also the predictions will change oh now the wolf did not kill the girl then what did the wolf do so the predictions may change as you go on reading the predictions may keep changing because the author has got something in mind and you have something in mind it's very rarely it is there is a coincidence between what you think and the author thinks it also helps you in making connections to prior knowledge somewhere you would have read a story before and now you are reading a new story and it, it may get connected oh in that story I read and that boy also was struggling the boy was not the boy was not interested in studying the boy was interested in drawing and painting similarly the girl in this story is also interested in, in drawing and painting only so it is it connects you to the prior knowledge not pre the story which you have read before right it will may it will help you make connections between text and personal experiences this is called text to true self personal experiences yeah i had been there i have i had seen um, i when i am reading the story of the uh, little red riding hood and when you see the picture or when you see the long skirt which the little girl is wearing you would connect it to your i also had a similar long skirt which my grandmother had bought it to me or my father had brought it so you start connecting it to your personal experiences the little red riding hood is riding a cycle and you'll say it looks similar to my cycle right this is what we all think uh, the wolf is wearing a glass goggles um, the wolf uh, the little red riding hood is walking through the path in the jungle and she's got a beautiful flower basket in her hand how you know you start I also had a similar basket and they used to have flowers in that so you start connecting as they grow older as you grow older then you your connections are between textbooks or the books generally what we read and this will help you that is text to self you are come you are connecting the text with your personal experience and also connecting the text to the world okay the author is explaining about waterfalls you had seen a photo similar waterfall sometime back so you will start comparing it this 
will also help you in understanding the new words, the difficult words, which we say new or difficult vocabulary words. Remember children, the more new words you get to learn, the more new words you understand with the meaning, the better you would speak in any language. Whether it is English or Telugu or Kannada or Tamil or it is Urdu or Arabic or French, any language, what is most important is you need to know a lot of words. You cannot keep using the same words. It has to be stronger. The boy felt stronger. The boy was brave. The boy, the boy was courageous. The same, the see, brave, courageous, different synonyms I am using because the different words and each word would give a different meaning to the sentence. And it also, it also enhances the confidence when you are talking. So, difficult vocabulary words, it helps you increase in understanding that is in comprehending a paragraph so if you know the words if you have understood the words in a previous story and next time when the new the same word is getting repeated you will enjoy the story better if you are not knowing the words then you will have to every time keep looking into the dictionary that is also good but how long you keep looking into the dictionary if you don't learn and keep try to remember those new words so it's important and also it will help you visualize, visualizing things. It creates mental images in your brain. It will help you understand, it will help you recall details. I said, oh, I had been to the waterfalls when, I, when, I, when we were driving to the waterfalls. I, we were passing through a forest and I could see a lot of deers, I could see a lot of uh, monkeys, I could see. So, you will recall the entire journey, you will recall all the details and you will try to remember exactly what had happened on that particular day. And this will help you when you are reading the comprehension. If the author is talking about a deer in the story or if you are talk, if you are reading Little Red Riding Hood and if the author is talking about the wolf and you had seen a wolf in a, sand, in a wildlife sanctuary then you will start recalling those details. It will help you remember because you are, com you are connecting to the real incident which happened when you had seen the uh, wolf and now you are reading about the wolf it will help you remember okay wolf looks like this so when you are reading a passage very simple you just close your eyes and listen if if, if now I am reading a, para, a story for you when I am reading this story you can see you can see the entire video and next time you listen to my voice and then you start imagining and you start creating a movie in your mind. The story what I am going to read now is very interesting story. So you, when I am reading it, you close your first time you see the entire story or first time you just don't see the video, you just give a very strong ear. Strong ear, you listen to it very carefully and understand what I am trying to read and what I am trying to explain and then start creating a movie in your mind. Put pictures in your mind and you see how it is going to help you in comprehending the paragraph when you read it again. The last summarize. It helps you identify what is the main idea in the story. What is that the author or what is, a, what is that the person who has written the stories wanted to explain is there a moral in this? If there is a moral, what is the moral of the story and how it is going to help me? Right? So if you start summarizing it, because you can't remember the entire story and you can't write it. If you could remember, if you could summarize the story in your own words, that means you have understood the story clearly. 
so you should sort out the information at times there is information at times there are incidents and at times there is something which is very important so through the information to determine what information is important and what is not important take the most important information put it in your mind or put it in your then put it in your own words and when you are asked to summarize you need to explain the story in few words you can't write the whole story like if i ask you to summarize your visit to the wildlife sanctuary you can't write from morning we got up at 5 o'clock i went i had a bath then i had a breakfast then i had meal then i had you know, packed up my all my things and we sat in the car you know i was sitting at the back seat and if you start writing like this the story becomes a lengthy one if you you were asked to summarize your visit to the wildlife sanctuary or you are asked to summarize a visit to the zoo so you need to yeah we started at 5 o'clock got freshed up had snacks or breakfast and then my father drew me to the zoo which took about half an hour from my house we we parked the car and we purchased the tickets and we walked inside the zoo it took us 6 hours to see the zoo and then i say okay i saw this 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 in the zoo summarized so this strategy will help you to also create your own story right because you got the new words you got you are imagining things when you are reading it so overall if you could read comprehend then you would be do and then you would be able to do a good summarize the summarization of the entire story so let us now move on to the story what exactly the story talks about the story which i am going to read it to, to you today is glass of milk a very interesting story glass of milk listen carefully now you can close your eyes and listen to the story or in the first case you see the entire video as you listen to my voice then come back close your eyes and then start imagining or start connecting to something if you have a story connected to a glass of milk now let us see what if you have a story then let us see how what you would be able to generate out of the thought process what you have one day a poor boy who was selling goods from door to door to pay his way through school found he had only one thing time left and he was hungry a boy who was poor and he wanted to pay up his fees so he started selling some goods and then as he was doing it finally he felt he was hungry and then when he looked into his pocket he had one thin dime left there's a phrase here one thin dime left the one which i wonder like the three words which i have underlined actually means he had a one single coin in his pocket or he had very less money in his pocket with which he could not afford to buy anything so now what does the boy do he decided he would ask for a meal at the next house and he knocks a door of a house on the street however he lost his nerve when a lovely young woman opened the door he lost his nerve again there's a phrase here four words phrase he lost his nerve when a lovely young woman opened the door he lost his nerve what does it mean nerve is uh, i'm not a uh, nerve is something which is there inside the body that is not he he, he didn't he didn't lose a nerve he lost his nerve actually means he got scared you know a stranger he's walked up to a house knocks the door and he 
he wanted to ask a meal but suddenly when he looks at the lovely young woman who's opened the door he will scared should i ask or should not should i not ask so what does he do after that instead of a meal he asked for a glass of water now he lost his uh, entire courage he got scared and what do we do now it normally happens when you when we all imagine we all uh, visualize we all practice we say we want i'll walk up to this guy i'll walk up to this man i'll walk up to my father and i'll ask him this 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 today suddenly when you go in front of your father or somebody an elder person you lost you lose your nerve then you get scared and you say what what does that you want no nothing i don't i don't need anything papa and you just come back so he this guy also changes his thought initially he wanted to ask a meal now suddenly when he seen this lady at the door he says can i have a glass of water she thought he looked hungry so brought him so she brought him a large glass of milk he drank it so slowly and then asked how much do i owe you so when i as i'm reading you would have uh, for you there would be a lot of familiar unfamiliar words a word there would be a word in this paragraph which you would not have heard about or you would have heard about only once or twice not regularly like there is a word called hungry there's milk that is drank slow these are not regular words which you would have heard there is another word which i have underlined called o w e that is o how much do i owe you now what is the meaning of o so when the boy didn't expect that he would be given a glass of milk not a small glass there's an adjective there large glass of milk probably it was not a small glass it's a large glass of milk probably it contained about half a liter of milk or a quarter of a liter of milk so the boy hesitantly asks the lady how much do i owe you because milk doesn't come free of cost and this boy is a total stranger so scared with a fear he says how much do i owe you ma'am now what does the lady say you don't owe me anything she replied mother has taught us never to accept pay for a kindness what does the lady say the lady says my mother has taught us she had taught me that when you do a kind when you are generous when you help with people you don't expect anything in return so she says mother has taught us never to accept pay for a kindness so remember children when you do any help to anybody when you do a favor when you help them it might be even when you offer a small eraser to somebody don't expect tomorrow a pencil from the person whom you have given an eraser if you have given a glass of water don't expect that person would come back to you and even say a thank you because helping has to be to the level of helping you help and once you help it has to be a full stop you cannot even have a comma and you cannot continue after that expecting something so you, so the lady says mother has taught us never to accept pay for a kindness he said then i thank you from my heart it's the boys characteristic 
the boy thanks the lady because she gave him a large glass of milk so he just says thank you ma'am i thank you from my heart now this boy's name is howard kelly as howard kelly left that house after drinking that large glass of water no oh, sorry large glass of milk he not only felt stronger physically that is because when you drink a large glass of milk you gain that strength he not only felt stronger physically but his faith in god and man was strong also he believed that there is a person there is a creator who would always help you there is a man on the earth who is always going to help there is a there's somebody on the earth who would come in the form of a father who would come in the form of a mother who would come in the form of a friend or a sister or a brother or a neighbor somebody is there who would definitely help us remember this his faith in god and man was strong also he had been ready to give up and quit initially when he was feeling weak and he didn't have money to eat he was struggling to sell the goods he had given up he said now it is not possible for me to do anything let me let me stop my studies let me start working and earn some money to for survival so he gave up and he quit then when he got the milk he felt physically stronger he started believing in himself again and now he was charged up to continue what he wanted to do that is he wanted to continue studies and he continued his studies many years later after that incident many years later the same young woman became critically ill the local doctors the local doctors who were there in that town were baffled i underline this word they were confused baffled this is they were confused they didn't know what to do because some small towns do not have that facility of uh, medical facilities to uh, uh, help critically ill people so they were confused the local doctors were baffled that means confused they finally sent her to the big city they said uh, we can't do here we can't do anything here please take uh, this lady to a bigger hospital a better hospital a multi speciality hospital sent her to the big city where they called in specialists because normally you have a lot of specialist um in cities and bigger towns to study her rare disease it was a very rare disease so they called in specialist and they started calling in experts to study the disease and probably if the experts can understand they would cure this critically ill woman who had given that large glass of milk to that boy and that boy's name is kelly howard kelly dr howard kelly was called in for the consultation this boy who was howard kelly has become now dr howard kelly so he was called in for consultation and when he heard the name of the town she came from somebody walked up to him and said sir there's a lady from this town who's critically ill and we want you to come and uh, have a look and probably treat her so when he heard the name of the town she came from a strange light filled in his eyes strange light filled in his eyes it doesn't mean that there was light in his eyes you know normally when you when it normally happens you know when suddenly when some old friend of yours has, has called you or suddenly there's a new old friend whom you had seen about 5 years back 3 years back comes home one day you're happy you're curious to meet you want to know what happened to what how what happened in the last 3 years with your friend what all did he do so similarly dr howard kelly also had that strange light fill in his eyes he says somebody who helped me that day with a large glass of milk 
and with that milk because I had that milk I was physically strong and I wanted to give up my studies I didn't give up my studies and today I have become a doctor so he was happy the minute he heard that this lady is come from that town but he was not very sure if it is the same lady immediately he rose and went down the hall of the hospital to her room he walked up straight to the room where the lady was admitted dressed in his doctor's gown he went in to see her he recognized her at once he had not forgotten that face that face which gave him that large glass of milk dressed in the doctor's gown he went in to see her he went back he recognized her at once he went back to the consultation room determined to do his best to save her life after seeing her he went back to his cabin he went back to his table and he started studying understanding what problem this lady had because he wanted to save her life he wanted to save her life why because she had offered kelly that large glass of milk that is only one day and one time that particular day when he was small he was weak he was completely dejected in life and he didn't know what to do he wanted to give up everything at that particular moment this lady came in as an angel to dr kelly that time he was just a boy with howard kelly so she helped she showed her kindness and because of that dr kelly wanted to do best give her the best treatment and make sure that she survives and save her life and what did he do after that from that day he gave special attention to her case he took the responsibility of attending to her every day he gave special attention he brought in every necessary um medicine he called in the experts if he was not able to do it he got her the fruits he got her everything after a long struggle the battle was won he fought he wanted to save her and he struggled and struggled and finally he won what did how did he won he saved the life of that lady who gave him that large glass of milk Dr Kelly requested the business office to pass the final bill to him for approval. So normally in the hospital the bills are raised when the treatment is done and when the patient is happy to go home. So Dr Kelly walks up to the reception and he informs the person there who is preparing the bill. He uh, he tells him he asks him to prepare the bill and bring it for his approval. when the accountant brings the bill he looks at it he looked at it and then wrote something on the edge and the bill was sent to her room normally the patient has to pay for the bill but before the bill reaches the patient that is this lady dr kelly first gets the bill he writes a small note at the edge of the bill at the bottom of the bill he writes a sentence now what does he write let us see so when the bill reaches this young lady who is critically ill and now she is fit to go home she is no more a young lady now she is grown up she feared to open it for she was sure it would take the rest of her life to pay for it take the rest of her life again a phrase means she would have she might have to earn and earn and earn to pay the bill back because she didn't had so much of money to pay she thought she might have to request the doctors to wait she would earn the money and come back and pay back so when she was sure it would take the rest of her life to pay for it all finally she looked at 
and something caught her attention on the side of the bill. Remember, Dr. Kelly had written a note at the bottom edge of the bill. What has he written? Now let us see again what he had written. She reads these words written by Kelly at the bottom edge of the bill. Paid in full with one glass of milk. She is baffled. What does baffle mean? She is confused. Paid in full with one glass of milk. What does this mean? When did I pay? When did I pay? Paid in full with one glass of milk. Signed by Dr. Howard Kelly. That day she gave a glass of milk. That was a gratitude which Dr. Kelly always had. He remembered that person who gave him that strength that day, who gave him that confidence, who put his put him who put belief in him. And because of that he could proceed, he could go up, fulfill his dream off and he continued his studies and went on to become a doctor and today that same boy who was struggling that day for a meal treated the young lady the lady who was critically ill and in return did dr kelly take money no he paid the kindness he thanked her by giving back the same love an affection which this lady had shared long time back. So she shared the love and affection that day. The same love and affection has come back. So what you give will always come back. You share love, you will get people to love you. You start hating people, you start screaming at people, you don't like people around you, they will not like you too. You start loving them, they will start loving you. So it's always remember what you give will come back. So she read these words paid in full with one glass of milk. Tears of joy flooded her eyes as her happy heart prayed. Thank you God that your love has spread broad through human hearts and hands. She starts in her tears of joy, starts ro rolling down through her cheeks and she prays, Thank you, Lord. The love which I shared years back has spread through human hearts and hands. He remembered it for so long that this person had helped me and when the time came in he held her back he remembered it always in the heart he had that person in his heart all the time and through his hands that is he was a doctor he operated her he helped her he cured her he treated her and through the hands he gave back the love which this lady had given to him years back with a glass of milk. There is a saying which goes something like this. Bread cast on the water comes back to you. You throw a bread piece on the, on the seashore, on the water, it comes back because it doesn't get drawn. The good deed you do today may benefit you or someone you love at the last, at the least expected time. Did the lady ever imagine that there would be a boy, there would be a doctor who had, whom she had held years back and today the same doctor is treating me and he would not, ex he would not ask me to pay a single penny. She didn't expect. That's what happens, the deed which you do, you have done something today, you help somebody, you, you share your food, if a friend has not brought lunch box, you are sitting next to him in the group and you share the lunch with him, 
the relationship, the bond between the friendship, the two friends grows up. You are walking on the street and you have noticed, you notice that there is somebody who is struggling to cross the road. You help that old person or a, a gentleman cross the road. You hold his hand and you just take him on the other side and leave him there. <coughs> this is also a good deed. We need not do big things in life. We need not go donate huge amounts of money. A small favor, a small help, even to the extent if you see a dog is limping and if you could get hold of the dog and take him to a veterinary doctor, a doctor, a, a dog which is getting, you know, the, it's raining and there's a cat which is struggling to get a space to escape from the rain, you can just bring the cat under a shed. That is also a good deed. And remember, this is going to help you. And when is it going to come back to you? It will come back to you when you don't even know when, uh, what is going to happen. That is why it says, bread cast on the waters come back to you. The good deed you do today may benefit you or someone. If, you, if not you, it might help your brother, it may help your father, it may help your children. Benefit you or someone you love at the least expected time. You won't even know. Now what do I do? At times we are, we are struggling. We, are, we don't know what to do at times, you know. Um, what, what do I do? And, um, I don't have anybody now. I'm alone. Suddenly there would be somebody, somebody would walk up to you and say, your father had helped me long time back. What problem do you have? Can I help you, sir? The deed which your father had done, your father would have just given a drop to him on his bike. Few years back when he was getting drenched in rain, your father would have asked him to get into the car and he would have dropped you, dropped that gentleman somewhere. And that gentleman remembers seeing you with your father and when you are in, when you are facing a problem, he would walk up to you and say, can I help you sir? It does happen. It has happened with me. It definitely happens with everybody. But the simple condition is being kind enough to help and not expecting anything in return. The lady didn't even expect anything when he, she gave the she gave Kelly the large glass of milk. And after all, isn't that what life is all about? So through this story, we learn that helping others will always do good for us. It will never harm us. So remember, dear children, through this story. What have we learned today? A simple, a large glass of milk. One glass of milk would not have costed even 50 rupees or 30 rupees or 20 rupees. With that help which this lady, young lady had done years back, today it helped her. And also, the boy who got the help, the boy who drank the milk, repaid it back because she showed that love and affection that day and that boy remembered that love and affection and he carried on in his life with that love and affection. Imagine if that lady had turned him down, he would have got dejected in life, he would not have studied, he would not have become a doctor and the love would not have spread. The boy would have, probably the boy would have started hating everybody. And the hate, and you would have only hated in the world. So when you, when you give love, you get love back. When you, when you start sharing, you will definitely get back. When you love somebody, people would love you back. This is what the story is all about, and I'm sure you would have enjoyed the story. Share this story with your friends, share this video with your friends so that probably they could help somebody and make this world a beautiful place for all of us to live together in peace.
थैंक यू